Hey guys, I'm so excited to see so many people on the phone for our first ever live open networking session. So thanks so much for your interest in the ClinOps Toolkit and for connecting with your peers in clinical trial management and with the CRAs. And I'm really excited to open up our Ops Elevate group today to the general public. I can see we have a lot of new members on the line and we probably won't have time for introductions for all of you, but I'm hoping some of you will raise your flag during the open mic session and tell us a little bit about why you joined, what you're hoping to learn today, and we can get you guys connected in our online forum where you can continue the conversation even after this call. So I'm Nadia Bracken. I'm the Chief Experience Officer at the ClinOps Toolkit. And I started a blog as a personal outlet eight, nine years ago to talk about my journey as a clinical research associate. But now I've learned that through connecting with others, I can accomplish a lot more than I could ever accomplish on my own. And I've taken that whole outlook into a group that we created as a team in August called the Ops Elevate. The whole concept behind the Elevate program is to hand select people that are going through the same challenges, still they're working in different therapeutic areas, different companies, but connect them with each other. So they could have online exchange in a safe and private forum and solve common problems. Hi, thanks for joining. <laughs> so everybody today has the possibility to turn on their Hello. microphone. Hey, Jason, awesome. And you have the option to turn on your audio, but because we have so many attendees on the call, we're probably gonna just mute everybody and ask you to use the flag option in the mobilized platform. So we're really looking forward to introducing you to our core group, the Elevate with the number eight, because there's eight of us all around the world. We have participants from Vietnam, Ukraine, and all over the US. And we want to talk to you about what we've learned about networking, but also to get your best opinions and advice. What helped you be a successful networker within your company, between you and your vendors, and then in your peer networking groups as well. So it's not just going to an event and eating cocktail shrimp and having a glass of champagne, Networking is something we do in the office every day, and it's something we do with our sites. So we're building on a lot of concepts that we've been talking about for the last 12 weeks, but we opened this up to you today uh, just to let you have a taste of what we talk about in our weekly Sunday success session. So thank you, everybody. This is very much a team effort, and it just means the world to me to see how many people are interested in the work we're doing. So if you're joining on the, on the mobilized platform, you'll see some slides. But even if you're just on the telephone listening in, I still think you'll get a lot out of this session. But if you have questions or comments, raise your flag. There's an option in the Fuse platform. And you can also, there's a chat function. You can chat individually with anyone you see online. You can chat with the group. And I'd love to see the conversation going while we're going through this presentation. So that's my intro. I think I killed about three minutes. I was just letting a few more people join. And I'm really excited to see how many people are on the call. So thank you again for your interest. and. Let's start talking about networking. So again, I'm Nadia Bracken. I'm your chief experience officer at the ClinOps Toolkit. And my superpower is connecting people one to another. So thank you and believing in me and dialing in and getting connected today. So when we talk about networking, I fundamentally believe like many other people on the internet that you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. So I wanted to surround myself with a group of people that were passionate about becoming more effective clinical trial professionals. So I started a group called Elevate um, at the fall of last year, and we're doing an official formal pilot program with eight people all over the world uh, that we started in August. So this has just been a really illuminating experience right from day one. I've met people that I would not have ordinarily met in my normal work, but I think that they influence the way that I do work because I'm surrounding myself with people that have the same opinions, um, different perspectives, different companies, um, but that same drive to really help patients and to be excellent at what we do. So when it comes to networking, who are you spending your time with? And are there other people that you could be spending your time with that you want to get closer to because you want to take on part of their personality and have them influence the way that you approach the world as well? And that's what networking is all about. So thanks for joining in and let's get started. I've got some notes over here because I don't want to miss anything. So I'm going to go ahead and advance to a slide that I prepared for you. And I thought this was a really cool quote. It's just a ancient African proverb. And the idea is if you're on an adventure and you want to go fast, 
go alone, right? You know, you don't have to wait for anybody. You can just plow ahead. But if you really want to go far, go with others. And this is fundamentally what we think at Clean Ops Toolkit. And it's why we're always growing and empowering others to be a part of this movement. We think everything should be open. And through exchange, we can discover effectiveness in our work. So go fast alone, but go farther with others. So let's see, what else have I got in here for you? I wanted to, because we have some people on the call that may not be as familiar with the toolkit, um, just invite you to link to us on our many channels. Um, no matter how you like to receive your news on the internet, you can find us at opskit slash connect. So it's opsk.it. When you go to that URL, you'll find links to a couple Facebook pages that we have. We have private Facebook groups. We have a couple LinkedIn groups. So one of them is private, one of them is open. Uh, we have Twitter, we have Instagram, we have email. There's the sticky notes newsletter. Thank you to all the subscribers who dialed in today. Uh, why is it not working? Oh, Darren's making, Darren's having some trouble with the, uh, with the flag. So if you do have a comment, just type it right in. All right, so basically, um, I just wanted to let you guys know that we do have um, a lot of different ways to, to connect. There we go, now Darren's in line. All right, and we did just reach the milestone of 1,000 members. I'm exceptionally proud of the group. And what I'd like to see from this point moving forward is not quantity, but quality. So I'm looking for depth of connection, people really coming on and saying, hey, I've made a mistake and I need some help, or hey, I have a problem and I just need some different perspective for the solution. I wanna see our members more deeply engaged with each other in a true exchange uh, to discover ways to be more effective. So I think a thousand's great. Now that we're there, I'm all focused on depth of connection and we're growing our team actually to find new community managers who can help foster those conversations. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely reach out to us, um, connect at clinopstoolkit.com. Just shoot us an email and say, I wanna get involved. You can get involved with as little as an hour a month. It, you know, it's whatever time you have, there's always something going on. And the team will be happy to uh, share with you some of our projects and opportunities in 2016. So um, like I said, I've been blogging for the nine years and we wanted to open up this group. And so Jennifer is, one of the founding members of the Elevate program. She lives here in San Francisco with me, um, just right down the street, like three blocks away. So we were carpooling to work and Jennifer said, what if we let other people onto the call? Like what if we opened up the Elevate program just one week only, just so people could see what we're doing? And I said, well, that's, that's great, let's do it. So we opened up the call and then the next week she said, wouldn't it be great if we actually had like an in-person event in San Francisco so that everybody in the Bay Area knew what we were doing every Sunday? I said, that's great too. So we basically on Wednesday morning decided to do, I think it was Tuesday morning, to do a networking event in San Francisco. Thank you to those of you that are on the call and actually came out to have a beer with us. It was strictly networking. Um, we advertised it for what, like 36 hours? <laughs> it was two days, um, three days. And then we got... Um, over 15 people came. So it was really a testament to, I think people want to be more satisfied at work. And one of the ways that I believe you can be more satisfied is to connect with others um, who are passionate about the work you're doing. So it was just exciting to see people at the happy hour. And if any of you have dialed in today, thank you for checking out what we're doing. Um, but there's always a chance to connect. I've been running the local networking group for about two years, and we're gonna try to do more online events so that we can include people from all over the world, not just the Bay Area. We're also looking at opening other chapters around the US. So if that's something that you're interested in facilitating in your area, get in touch with me. We have an email address called events at clinopstoolkit.com. We're always looking for sponsors, and we're always looking for people to join us in local networking events. So. All right, we have a volunteer onboarding happening in San Francisco on November 14th. So if you are in the Bay Area and you wanna find out what we're working on and how you can get involved, um, join us for a fun morning of volunteer networking onboarding and meet the team and learn about our many projects because we rely on the support of all volunteers and it's very much a, a team effort. So just wanna remind the people that are joining now, welcome to the Fuse platform, I'm Nadia. And if you have any questions, there's an option for you to raise a flag and you can ask questions, introduce yourself. We're having an open mic session and you can also leave in the
Okay, so welcome to the Fuse platform. And if you have any questions, you can always just um, put them right in the chat or you can raise a flag. So sorry, my internet just dumped me right there, but I'm in and I'm projecting the slides. And if you guys could just write in the chat and indicate that you can see the slides, that would be great because I want to make sure that you're following along. All right. All right, so Darren has restarted it. So it looks like we have some people joining back in. Just gonna give them a minute to come back in. We're testing the limits of this Fuse platform. This is the first time we've, uh, we've used it with so many people online. So thanks for dialing back in everybody. All right, I think we have a quorum. So I'm gonna keep going. And we got a couple people in the chat confirming for me that, let's see what they say. Gilbert and Natasha, and they say, we can see the slides, fantastic. So I think we're back in business. All right, isn't technology fun? <laughs> April can see it, great. Shay can see it, fantastic. You guys are great, thank you so much. That helps me a lot. So now we know the chat works as well. All right, so let me go into our program for the day and for anyone who is interested in getting on the waiting list for Elevate, um, we just finished our private pilot program. And what the heck is Elevate? So we created this uh, graphic just to explain the journey that everyone's been taking in the last 90 days. If you can imagine, um, we had this group of people line up to give three months of their life to, to pilot this with us and, and just give us their feedback in exchange for meeting another group of peers. So it's been a really fun experience. Um, I have some statistics I'm going to share about the program in a little bit. But basically, um, we just started our journey talking about leadership development, you know, self-assessment, learning about our own um, values and beliefs and personalities. And it really created a framework where we could do some skill building. And then we got into the meat of the program with you know, Microsoft Outlook and Excel and OneNote and a really, really great session on productivity that was led by our own Jennifer. And it's just been um, a whirlwind. I mean, I can't believe how much we've accomplished in the last 10, 11 weeks. And we want to tie everything together now with a talk we did last week on branding and then today, what does it mean to, to network? And what kinds of specific things can we do to help you improve your networking? And then next week, it's just gonna be, um, gonna be a recap. So in this program, there's a couple things we did not cover. And I want to ask for anyone who wants to pop in the chat or send me an email or raise your flag, are there other things that you wanna hear maybe in the next cohort and we could actually design a program around the skill building that you wanna do? So some of those items are, in Outlook and email management, we could go through um, short videos on how to customize the ribbon, how to use the task view, how to use folders and rules. Um, I noticed my camera is dead, sorry about that. Um, we could also um, figure out how to deal with difficult people. So how do you deal with problem investigators and your troublesome executives? Um, we could do more exploration on creative thinking. We could do mind mapping or learn how to create action plans that work, how to uh, influence your team and explain what the next steps are in a process. Uh, we could totally reformat this entire program. So I think we probably will be looking at a lot of those things in the November recap and in December, and we probably will redesign Elevate. Um, maybe break it up into three to four modules that'll be a little bit easier for people to take at their own pace. So just um, let us know what works for you. All right, somebody says they want to see, April wants to see more about effective resourcing and managing multiple studies. Fantastic. Yeah, I think we could do an entire module. And what's been really fun about this one is we brought in guest speakers and I think that's really added to the program. So even within the Elevate cohort one, hopefully we'll have people step up and say, hey, I want to teach a class on here's what I did. Um, this is specifically what worked for me for managing multiple studies. And I started at Gilead about a year ago and I was managing one trial. And the great thing about a job well done is getting rewarded with more work. So I think I now have like six studies. So it's definitely, it's definitely interesting uh, timing for me to think about how do I resource those trials? How do I even manage the emails? I mean, it's three and 400 emails a day, right? Um, and then which ones are actionable? So just that whole email triage thing is, is a huge part of trial management. Uh, it's managing your people 
and your processes, uh, but keeping all those balls in the air. So operations is fun. <laughs> so, so that's Elevate. Um, we'll talk a lot more about it next week. But today, um, I thought that I might be talking the whole time. And so I put in a slide to encourage you guys to please, please um, pipe in. <laughs> so raise your flag if you're willing to be unmuted and just do an introduction to the group so that everyone won't think I'm just talking to myself. And many of you joined specifically the network. You know, we covered the introductions, the personalities, the values, and I would really love to hear. Um, <laughs> so Ashia says, I know you look familiar. I work at Gilead. Um, but anyway, I think, you know, we learned last week about branding and it's hard because you're told not to self-promote. That's, that's not good, right? You don't wanna, um, it's bad, but here's the thing, you know, you, you write the narrative about yourself. People are going to talk about you and believe what they want about you. So why wouldn't you participate in contributing to how that narrative looks? And it's just your responsibility to control what other people think of you. No one's gonna stand up and be your brand advocate. So just like we brand our clinical trials and our drugs, um, brand yourself. And I think that was a really neat talk. And if anyone wants access to it, I'm happy to, uh, to share. We do record all these talks, by the way, this is recorded. If you would not wanna be included on the recording, send me an email and I can um, blur you out you know, as well. And, uh, things like that. So the last week uh, we did was all about effective meetings and that had a guest presenter. Um, and it was really great because she was uh, a professional consultant and she came in and gave us uh, just a masterclass on effective meetings. And I can't believe how much we covered in an hour, but it's definitely affected my work this week. I've been using a lot of the techniques um, that I learned and I learned uh, this word, I guess it's a buzzword everyone knows but me, but <laughs> cadence. So when you're working in a team, you really want to keep the cadence going, right? That's the drum beat that moves things forward. So it's knowing when your frequency of meetings is, what are the topics, setting up those agendas in advance and getting all the key stakeholders in the meetings. And I thought, this is it. Like once I get my cadence, then I can put things on autopilot. So when things come up as they do in clinical operations that are unexpected, um, you, you've got your cadence going and that can keep beating in the background. And I just, it really made a lot of sense to me. Um, so a couple of people are um, popping in and out of the call and that's totally fine, guys. We're gonna be going for like an hour. So if you do need to pop out, remember that we're recording it and I'm happy to send the recording afterwards. Um, but I was wondering if anybody in the Elevate program might be willing to share maybe what they've learned about themselves in this program. Um, do you understand others better? Uh, has anything we've done applied to you and your organization, to your suppliers, to your contract monitors? Um, did you try writing your elevator pitch? I actually sent out an assignment and told people to start working on um, an elevator pitch. I gave them 15 questions that I thought would inspire them um, to talk about what's the unique value that they bring to their role in clinical operations. But I'm not gonna unmute you guys because then we'll have 15, 20 people talking at once. Um, but if anybody wants to raise their flag and just maybe introduce themselves, someone who's been a member of the Elevate program or someone who's joining for the first time. Um, we do have a, a volunteer <laughs> raising their flag. Um, so Jennifer Brandel, I've unmuted you. Uh, again, Jennifer's here in San Francisco. Jennifer, can you talk to us a little bit about your experience in the last 12 weeks in Elevate? Sure, uh, so this is Jennifer Brandel. I'm currently a clinical trial specialist um, at a company here in South San Francisco or down in South San Francisco. Uh, I <laughs> met Nadia last year when I was networking. Um, I was trying to branch from research into clinical and it just kind of worked out that um, she had helped me get my job and that whole connecting people with uh, different backgrounds. But um, part of this program, I love it. I, I, I enjoy where you know other clinical research professionals can kind of get together and all elevate um, what I got the most out of was, you know, really just inside of what I can contribute or what I think I can contribute or who I know myself as to, as a leader within the group. And when Nadia asked me to be a guest speaker, I, you know, <laughs> it was the timing was like probably the worst timing ever for it to happen, but maybe it was the best timing. Um, I got promoted to, this is my first clinical uh, research or clinical operations job and four months in which is about the time that Nadia 
had asked me to be a guest speaker, I got promoted to clinical trial manager. Um, so I was doing my job and the clinical trial manager job, and then putting together a slide deck for um, the Ops Elevate program for week six. In And the topic was uh, organization and task management. It was just so perfect that while I was doing research that so much was going on in my life that I could just really stick to like here, you know, you're at that moment where you're really elevating yourself and doing something that you probably wouldn't have done and probably wouldn't have taken on, you know, given everything else that's happening in um, your workspace. But it provided so much because what I had learned from the group, I, I'm not great at task management, but inside of this peer mentoring, I'm peer, uh, you know, I learned from other members of the team that are great at task management. And that's not something I would have gotten before. And now as my team at work is growing, we've been scaling up. I'm able to be better at task management and accomplish more as a group. And I think that for me was just like that pivotal moment where if you know you take on something that you weren't necessarily gonna take on and how much you got out of it. And now, you know, I I grew as like being part of this group um, and the expertise that people have in their different areas. And that's that's the big part that I like about um, the Ops Elevate and the peer mentoring. Jennifer, thank you for sharing your experience. And I, like I said, I've learned more from Jennifer than she's learned from this group, but congratulations on your many accomplishments this year. And I'm just glad that you could be a part of this so we could watch and learn from you as well. So thanks so much. Thank you. Alrighty, so just in case nobody was willing to talk, I prepared a slide. Um, we do have one other uh, volunteer now. So I. I'm not sure you've actually dialed in as Nadia Bracken number three, which cracks me up. So I'm going to unmute Nadia Bracken number three. And will the mystery guest please reveal themselves now? You are off mute. Oh, all right. We got Christina as well. <laughs> Let me grab Christina while we wait. Hey, Christina. Can you hear me? Uh-oh, a little echo, so I'm gonna, you, you might have to turn off one, um, turn off the computer audio if you're on the phone. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's okay, I just muted you. So what we'll do, um, Christina, if you just, um, what phone number does your start with? 434, is that you? Sorry. Uh, 734? Oh, 734, okay, great. All right, Christina, so I unmuted your phone. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're perfect now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't know why that always happens to me. Um, yes, um, I, I, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, so far this program has been um, a great support and um, mentoring as well. And um, I guess I should introduce myself to everyone. Um, my name is Christine, Christina Carroll, and I have, um, just about 18 years in clinical research. I have a combination of preclinical and um, human um, trial studies. And so it's been a, um, a long journey, and it's, um, I've learned a lot. And um, I just wanted to just thank you for, the, for the, this experience and this um, time on the team. And um, I guess um, what I've, um, in, in my career at Pfizer, I've implemented uh, many programs um, for the site, and they actually have implemented some of the programs that I um, had created with others as well, and they still use the programs still to this day at numerous sites. So um, I guess that's one of the, one of the top uh, projects that I'm proud of. And, um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I just wanted to just thank you again for the opportunity for the CLINAP uh, team to be part of the team. And, awesome. Um, thank you. Well, Christina, I just, um, obviously, I want to thank you as well, because if you hadn't taken the, the step to be confident and try this out, we wouldn't have had, um, we wouldn't have had the, the successful program. So I'm curious, though, Christina, is there anything, like one thing about the program that you would recommend to others, just based on your experience? Um. Yeah, I mean, one thing I would say is just um, like the um, effective meeting and leadership um, part of the um, program. I really enjoyed that. 
you know, that aspect of it. And I definitely would, um, you know, um, refer that to others. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'm going to mute you now and then raise your flag. Okay. If you want to add. <laughs> Just so we'll keep the yeah. feedback. But thank you thank so you much for piping in. Yeah. Um, I saw that Anu was online and Anu, maybe you want to share with us. Um, it was great to see you, by the way, this week at the in-person networking. Um, thank you for showing up. Um, but do you want to talk about your experience in the program as well? Yes, definitely. Thank you, Nadia, for giving me the chance. And same to, same to you guys, too. It was so great to meet you and uh, Jessica and, uh, sorry, Jennifer. And also, it was nice. Uh, one thing I would like to uh, talk about this program is it was so great like you are just awesome like gathering everybody together for for so many days it like that you are portraying the real leader how it should be so and that is the that is the topic it really um kind of uh i i kind of got attracted to the leadership of that john was great his his lecture was just awesome and I'm still looking forward to to get those books and start reading about it. And then one one thing I I looked into myself about the leadership thing. I, oh, okay, go. I I I thought that uh, go getter um, attitude also can be one of the point of leadership thing. So um, being being resourceful, thinking about getting work done is one one point uh, it could be one of the quality of the leadership so it kind of gave me motivation to go forward uh, with it that's what i want to say thank you so much nadia and thank you so much jennifer too oh anu thank you and for me too i think that's what i learned through the program i'm notorious for starting things i love starting things i'm a very creative free thinker um, i'm not as famous for seeing things through so I like to switch jobs every 18 months. I like to change out my circle of friends, you know, every couple of years. I am just into many things. I have thousands of emails and I always have loose ends. But through this group, I've met people who are not like me and that love checking boxes and love seeing things through. And it's just really taken over my life as well. At work, I'm now using a lot of the tools and checklists we developed here, and I'm getting a lot more done. And as a, as a reward for that, I've actually received a lot more recognition at work and a lot more responsibility. So I, I owe a lot of my success this year to this program. And it's I know it's contributed to the confidence I have, and I know it's contributed to the way that I interact with people um, in my study team as well. So I, I know that's true for you, Anu, because I saw the thank you note that they sent to you. Um, but I definitely, um, I appreciate that. And April, I think you had um, something to add too. So I'm gonna make sure that April can, April's actually developing a program a lot like this for her working group because uh, she's a manager of um, eight different CRAs. So April, you're off mute now. Do you want to talk to us about your experience in the program? I see that you brought a friend today, by the way. I see Gina's on the line. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, April, I don't think your audio is working today. But if anybody wants to dial in um, on the phone, you can also use a, a landline um, and we can unmute your landline. Um, so for anybody who wants to dial in, the phone number is 201-479-4595. Again, it's 201-479-4595. Obviously this won't work during the recording, but today while we're live, um, you can dial in with meeting number 309-13418. Again, it's meeting number 309-13418. And Jennifer, you'll, you'll chat that to everybody in the chat so they know what the phone number is and the meeting number. Alrighty, well, April, if you do come back online later, um, Gina says, hey, <laughs> thank you for the chat. So Gina, it's awesome that you're in this program today. I'm glad we could open this up for everybody. Alrighty, so that's our round table. If you think of something you wanna chime in, um, we got about 30 minutes left and I did prepare some specific um, action items and notes for you on networking. So I'm gonna get into kind of the main program now, but at Anytime you can join the discussion, just raise your flag and I'll stop <laughs> and let you let you kind of chime in and, and add your points as well, because it's meant to be interactive. But with this many people on the line, um, I didn't leave the line open. So 
definitely just raise a flag. And if you're on the phone, um, you can't really raise a flag, but just give me the first three digits of your phone number and I can unmute you because I'll know who you are. Um, so you can just put it in the chat and we'll manage it that way. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna keep chat open so I don't miss anything. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go back to, just in case nobody had anything nice to say about the program, which luckily there were lots of nice things. Um, this is Min. So Min's in Vietnam and she's been following along kind of virtually. She does get in the chat and talk to us on the emails every week, but it's not really possible for her to join the calls just because of the time difference. But I got this amazing email from her this morning. It was like two pages long and it was a one-on-one -on -one private message to me. And I stole this out of it. I hope she won't mind. Um, it said the group's ideas and feedback are valuable for my ongoing work. And I love being in Elevate. I love being in this group. So Min's been working for about five to 10 years um, in Vietnam. And what's super cool is she's going to be starting um, her own SMO. And it's just it's so different, you know, where she's working than the regulations that we're dealing with in the U.S. And having her international perspective has been wonderful. And the other international member we have in the group is Tanya. She's in the Ukraine and she's really just right at the edge of Russia. So it's it's just been fascinating. Um, I've talked to her for hours on end about how has she been dealing with actually getting monitors to the sites? Because a lot of the areas you can't get data in or out. You can't get lab samples in or out. And these, you know, these are not real concerns that I have today in my role as a trial manager, but other trial managers do. And it was just, it was just eye opening, you know, to talk to her and learn about what she's struggling with. It really gives you perspective as well. So um, I really enjoyed having everyone in the group, but especially I got to say, because when I blog, 30% of my audience is outside of the U.S. It's nice to have people outside of the U.S. in the group as well. So we'll try to keep this going in other cohorts, even though they can't always be on the calls. Um, they do watch the replays and they, they join the conversation and they've shared templates and their perspective and um, just special thanks to men. So when you do watch the replay, men and Tanya, um, you guys have been awesome. And I really appreciate the commitment you've made to the program. So, all right. By the numbers. So every week I like to do um, a number slide just to let everyone know what's going on. It's like a, a way to celebrate what we've accomplished. And I'm being a little selfish today because I put um, I put Ebola all over the slide. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if you can see this is a little Ebola virus in the background. Um, but I wanted to just let everybody know that I'm working on a study team that actually helped with the investigational product GS5734. We have a named patient program where we actually created a clinical trial to service one patient. Um, so it's kind of awesome. Um, the original Ebola virus um, that Pauline Kafferke uh, had many months ago, uh, and it had been lying dormant inside of her brain, actually replicated at a very low level. And it's now reemerged to cause meningitis. So Pauline is this nurse in um, Scotland, and she actually got readmitted to the Royal Free Hospital in London a couple of weeks ago. And she was very ill, critically ill. And it was a very serious issue. Her doctor, Dr. Michael Jacobs, contacted Gilead and asked if we could give her our investigational product that we developed with the CDC, GS5734. So I just wanted to celebrate it because they made it public. <laughs> they announced it in the news last week and I was just so excited about my role in this program, um, which was literally, you know, filling out paperwork, right? Like it was steady startup and I didn't, you know, touch the, the novel nucleotide analog that went to London, but I feel very much a part of, you know, helping this patient. And I know in our clinical trials, we get to help thousands of patients. Um, and it's so difficult sometimes to remember the impact you're making at an individual level. So this week for me was all about just reviewing, yeah, that I do need to like push this paperwork you know, to the other signatory and get it loaded up into the controlled document system because it's literally, you know, life or death for this individual patient. So um, we wish her well, and I'm really excited about being able to be a part of that. So we do have one week left for Ops Elevate. And then I have 36 credit hours for the George Washington University uh, master's program. So what the heck is this? Um, there's an online master's of science program for clinical research administration. And April was thinking that she would like to be a part of it. So she joined Elevate and she said, am I gonna have time to do a master's program outside of work? And this has been a good way for her to know, could she keep up with the, the the dialogue going on here? Could she keep up with all, all the homework if she were in the program? And basically that program is 36 credit hours. It's 18 credit hours in the field of CRA. 
um, which is like the Clinical Research Administration. It's nine credit hours of strategic leadership courses, which by the way, I think we did like six hours in this program. And then we also did, um, yeah, three credit hours as an elective. So April, if you wanna tell us a little bit about the program, just give me the first three digits of your phone number because I, I don't know who to unmute, but tell me and I'll unmute you. And um, yeah, so it's really exciting. So I hope April will see it through. I know um, she has over 17 years experience working in industry and she has a full life outside of that. So I'm hoping that she has the confidence to go forward because I know that she's a great leader. And um, you know, April, I just un unmuted you now at the 434 four, four, number. So if you want to tell us a little bit um, about what your experience has been in Elevate and how it's prepared you for your master's program, that would be great. Yeah, can you hear me this time? No problem. Okay, perfect. Um, so before you mentioned the master's program, I just wanted to comment on one of the things I really liked about this program was that it was not completely um, directed towards our work. It was really directed towards ourselves and how we can discover things about ourselves that will help us in our work. And it was convenient that our work was all very similar. So I really, I really like that. And in particular, the whole um, what personality type you are and how do you work with other people and also what, what are your values and how do you bring those values to your workplace as well as to your your life outside of work. Um, so th th those two things, and I'm glad they were early on because they stuck with me throughout the program. Thank you, April. And that was by design. And I think when we take this program forward into the second cohort, we have to think about will the conversations be as rich and will people know each other as well if they don't have that foundation? So we're really going to have to put our, our noodle on how to, how to you know, administer this program moving forward. Cause I agree. I think they're really valuable foundation sessions. So, um, but are you going to do it? Are you going to go for the master's program? Did you decide? I am. I wrote my essay today. Do awesome. tomorrow. <laughs> well, we'll be watching with a lot of interest. So I'm excited for you. <laughs> um, and then for everybody on the call, um, I actually wrote an abstract for DIA and I want to do a presentation on job satisfaction with CRAs. I want to explain what helps keep them engaged at work because it's not a, a job where you get to give your opinion a lot. I mean, you're just really meant to go out and do the work and report back. And it would be great to have you know some creative space to play at work. So I'm going to create the ClinOps Water Cooler, which is an online internet style radio show and we'll dump it into a podcast so people can listen when they want but we'll we'll try to create a group where people can come and talk about current events and things that are challenging them and do it on a safe and confidential way um, so look for the water cooler and then look for me to start sending out some surveys um, i'm going to start doing some research on the di abstract because i am going to do a formal survey and just figure out what kinds of things are predictive of actually leaving your position you know, besides just your manager and your compensation, are there other things like being more engaged with your peers? This is my kind of hypothesis. <laughs> I want to make sure that I can talk about it at DIA. Um, so I'm definitely counting on you, April, to help me because I know you know a ton of CRAs. We're trying to get that survey out to 2,500 people and we want a response rate of about 6%. So maybe about 150 responses. And I'm really excited. I'll be sharing those results with you guys, everything that we learn. And um, we'll definitely be talking about this peer mentoring program as a case study and kind of give a roadmap to how other people can create a program like this within their company or outside of their company. Because I just think um, there's no reason we can't be connected um, at work and outside of work as well. So the no, only other stat on this slide, April, did you have anything else to add? No, no, that's a good right. that I would help you. <laughs> All right, yeah, you're gonna help me. Okay, so I'm gonna mute you back. Mm -hmm. Um, but just raise your flag if you want in again, and I'll, I'll unmute you. Um, so April had said to me last week, kind of in confidence, which I betray her confidence, you know, again on the call. Um, she said, it's been hard to keep up with the emails. I got to say, like once a week I sit down and do them. It's really important to me. Um, and I looked at the numbers today. I've been filing all the emails in a box. I use this Gmail application called Streak. It's free and it just lets you pool emails into like a label. And it's just a little bit easier to use than Gmail. So I use Streak, S-T-R-E-A-K. And um, there were 345 emails in the box, okay, since August. So <laughs> if April felt a little overwhelmed, um, that that's just a lot of volume for you know a program you do on the weekends. Um, so I think it's kind of funny and um, 
I actually have like a digest view. So I only get like one email a week and it's still 345. So there's just a lot that had to go on to administer this program. Um, just thanks to everybody behind the scenes who made it successful. And um, yeah, this is great. We have a roadmap on how to do it again <laughs> and how to do it better. So um, we should actually talk about networking. I mean, that was kind of the point of the call. So I'm going to go into my networking slides because I got about 30 minutes left because we're going to end around 2.15. Elevator pitch. All right, so you're gonna take command of your image and brand. I told you last week how to do it and I sent you some resources in the Elevate group. And if anybody wants further reading on this, you just reach out, connect at clinopstoolkit.com. I am always networking. I network for sport and for fun. <laughs> so I am competitive networking. I go to a lot of networking events in San Francisco. I'm just really lucky because of where I live. There's so much going on. And I also do a lot of things online and on Twitter um, just to stay involved in kind of what's current, what's happening in our industry. But there's a woman in the HBA named Linda McDermott, and she taught a networking class uh, last week. And that was actually through the Healthcare Business Women's Association. So I also volunteer at ACRP and HBA. And this lady said, we've got to you know, take the lead to let others know what we've accomplished and what contributions we could make in the future. So she was actually trying to put a positive spin on self-promotion because I think specifically as women, um, and I know we have men on the call, but I think it's hard to walk into a room and talk about yourself. And it's still hard for me, but I practice. So start practicing. You have authority. You have things that uniquely inspire you and you have passion. And we've discovered a lot of those through this program and the values exercises that we've done. But don't be ashamed to talk about what you have done and inspire people about what you could contribute in the future. So I just special thanks to Linda because I never really thought about uh, how difficult it is to, to self-promote. And it does seem like a negative thing, but she really reframed it for me in her talk last week. And I said, can I borrow this? And she said, of course, with attribution. Um, so when you wanna develop your elevator pitch, you can use the goals that we developed at week two. So in the foundations of this program, we sat down and figured out, you know, what are your core values? And then what inspires you? So all of that talk that we did at week two and week three, about your personality and your values will help you develop your elevator pitch. And then in week four, we actually had Sharon Hoffman come in. She's my personal coach. I have a life coach that helps me um, keep all the many balls in the air. And she wanted to find out what are you passionate about? She actually had us go through and fill out some worksheets. What brings us joy? Because when you know what makes you happy, you have a, a source to how to find those things in your work as well. And when you have the same passion in your life that you have in your work, um, it comes through and you become more impactful. So that was week four. And then later uh, we did have Jennifer come in and ask some really difficult questions. What does your workspace look like? How do you operate? Are you organized? Um, that was difficult because I looked at my workspace and it was a disaster zone. And <laughs> there are some people at work that stopped by the other day and um, this gal said, Hey, I used to sit in your desk. And I was like, yeah, I know. And now I sit here and I'm not giving it up. And she's like, well, I got to say when I sat there, it was a lot tidier. I said, oh, <laughs> but, um, but it does reflect you. I mean, people see, you know, what does your workspace look like and how do you operate? Um, are you getting things done? So um, what aspects of your personality and your passion and your interests overlap with your work? And that was really what we gave was all about. So we brought in John Estrada, who's been my mentor for over a decade. And he's advised me in my many job switches. And um, you don't have to keep searching. You, you just have to make what you want where you're at. And he really talked about this idea of you, you focus and you get what you focus on. Um, so you want to be the type of person that walks into a room and can pitch and talk about yourself and inspire others and exude passion. Well, then do it. Focus on it. Get out there and practice and don't be ashamed of it. Um, and that's what the elevator pitch is all about, developing that confidence. How do you unwind? How do you recharge? And what are you proudest of? And practice saying it out loud. And it doesn't have to be long. Um, so when I went through this exercise for myself, which I started in May, I wanted to become more confident um, so that I could continue to speak annually and that I could actually administer a program like this. So I needed to determine what my values were. What are my natural talents and what are my strengths? And they're not the same for everybody. So this is my word cloud. <laughs> 
I love word clouds. Um, so basically the, I asked everybody in my network some questions about me. And then when they came back, um, I figured out which words were coming up the most often. And I can send a link to this. Just if anybody wants to try it, I think it's some water. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Ah, allergies are so much fun. Let me just tell you. Okay. So one of my strengths is uh, not overcoming my allergies right now. Um, but in May, we did a program called How May We Help You? And we wrote a bunch of articles about how can we help our audience? How can we learn what they want us to write about, what they want us to talk about? And I wanted to grow the, the toolkit community. I wanted it to be bigger than just me. I wanted some help. And I was stretched so thin. I'd started a new job. And I just started to learn what it was like to ask for help. It was new for me. And in my decade of my career, I've only learned to ask for help in like the last 12 months. So I just wanted to make sure I had a sustainable plan to avoid burnout. And I went to my network and I said, I want to do the most important work. I want to outsource some of the work. I want to focus on the things that I'm good at. I actually hired some staff to help me. So I have virtual assistants now that help me. Um, administer the program and the blog and the social networking. Um, but it's because of this exercise I did in May because I wanted to help myself, which is something I hadn't been doing. I hadn't been putting myself first and it was to my own detriment. But now I've been able to ask, you know, I have a good idea of things I already can't do because <laughs> I can't do everything um, like videos. I'm terrible at making those. I have some things I don't like to do. Uh, like finishing work. Um, <laughs> and then I just thought it'd be good to get feedback on what people in my network truly thought I should do. So these are the questions I asked. Um, you're welcome to write them down and steal them and send them to people or modify them. Um, it only takes a few minutes. And I think I sent it out to like 20 people. And I basically heard back with everybody within a week, but there were people that were really, really important to me. So they wrote back. Um, number one, what do you think are my biggest passions and why? If you can think of at least two or three, that would be great please explain. Um, so this was awesome because I got to learn about my own values. You know, it was one thing for me to write them down, but it's one thing to see them reflected in the way other people view you. Um, number two, what do you think are my biggest natural strengths and talents? Please explain. So that's where we got a lot of this organization connecting. Things that come naturally to me, I don't think are hard, right? But the things that come naturally to you are probably your biggest talents and strengths. And that's why this question number two was so helpful because it lets you know the things that you really can contribute value to other people. Because when it comes time to give, then you should give from the things that come easily to you. Um, so this is how I like to connect with people by giving the things that are easy, like this, this idea that I can connect, this idea that I'm organized, um, that I'm a good networker. But I didn't know those things about me because they're just normal for me. Um, the third question I asked, and it was the big one, assuming you didn't know me personally, what talent, skill, or passion would you happily pay me to teach or help you with and why? Um, so this was pretty illuminating because it's, you know, people can value something about you, but not be willing to invest in it. And until they can kind of pull out their wallets and, um, and put their money where their mouth is, it, it lets you know where to develop your skill set. So it wasn't that I wanted to charge my friends to, to do something for me. Uh, it's that I really wanted to understand, am I doing the work that not only is impactful, but that matters to others. And it matters to others when they're, when they're willing to pay for it. I mean, that's, that's creating value. It's not that I necessarily would pay or charge. Um, but then the fourth item, I just put this in as like a wild card and I would encourage you to come up with your own wild card. Um, what did you think I was going to ask, but I didn't? What other feedback do you have for me right now just to help me prioritize and create value for the ClinOps Toolkit community? So people got back right away. This is the word cloud I created. And it really gave me a lot of clarity. So I would just recommend to you that write down your values, write down your goals, be ready with your elevator pitch, try it out on people. You could send an email. But if you don't even know how to start, have people write it for you. Just send an email and say, what do you, what do you like about me? And they'll write back and tell you, and you can turn that into your your pitch. So I would turn this into my pitch. I would look at it and say, oh, I'm Nadia. I run a community for clinical trial professionals. And my master power or my superpower is connecting people you know, to each other. And that would be what I would say at a, at a networking event. So figure out you know, what makes you unique and what you're great at and, and pitch it. Go on the rooftop and say it aloud. All right. So here we are at our networking event. 
and you get to choose your cocktail at the bar because hey networking loosens up the conversation if you drink some alcohol but you don't have to <laughs> you want to be careful um would this be the best drink to choose so i don't know if you can tell this is a bloody mary and it's got all of the accoutrements um some salt some you know, there's a pickled onion there's some celery it's got like a pepper on it and then behind it are actually some shots of these are like clam shots so it's like clam juice with butter and bread and lemon um this may not be a good drink for networking so <laughs> i just want to put it out there um i thought this would make you guys laugh um, my favorite drink when i'm networking is uh soda water with lime so it kind of looks like you're holding a vodka um, it's very refreshing and, you know, you can wet your palate and, um, but you don't actually get drunk, <laughs> which is great. And you don't actually have like horrendous clam breath or whatever breath this bizarre Bloody Mary would make. And then, you know, you don't get those little berry seeds in your, <laughs> in your teeth or anything like that. So if you are at a networking event and there are drinks, um, think carefully about what you choose. And I just thought that was a funny photo. Um, but why are people going to fail? Why are you going to stink at networking? Um, if you're not clear about who you're going to help and what problems you solve, um, it's probably not going to be clear to people you're talking to. And when I talk about preparation for an event, you know, that's it, sitting down and figuring out what your superpowers are and being able to speak about them. Because self-promotion is a good thing. Like we talked about, it's the way that you figure out what value you're going to give in the future and what value you've already provided. So if you fall down on the preparation, um, then you may as well not go to the event because no one's going to want to talk to you. No one's going to remember you. Um, so come in with a strong pitch. It won't be for everybody, uh, but you are looking to connect with people. So one of the ways that I prepare is I look through the profiles of everyone that's attending. And it's really easy now because you can register for these events online. Like I go to meetup.com and I can read people's profiles and see what their background is. And I usually send a note to them before the event and say, hey, I'm looking forward to meeting you. I saw that you're into the intersection of digital health and consumer design. And I'd love to talk to you more about this topic or whatever it is that they're into. And you say, I want to hear more if you genuinely want to hear more. Um, so you can find people's profiles online and kind of stalk them. And I, I do that because I want to figure out if it's worth my time to go to the event or not. There's just so many to choose from. I want to, I want to have a plan. And then when I meet people and I say, Hey, what were you hoping to get out of tonight? Um, a lot of people are like, I don't know, just networking. And that's such a wasted opportunity. Cause what if you said, Oh, I'm specifically trying to find somebody who would help me with translations of an ICF. I'm looking for a vendor who can work in um, Ukraine because they have four different languages and I want to make sure that I don't have any problems, um, you know, with, with the translations. Who, who have you worked with? Or do you know somebody I could talk to tonight? So if you're going to go to a networking event, go with a specific problem you want to solve and be, be okay saying like, oh yeah, I came here hoping to meet somebody who could refer me to that, whatever it is. And it's great too, because it's a good way to get out of the conversation if you don't like talking to them. Um, you can always say, look, I've really enjoyed talking to you, but my objective tonight was to meet somebody who, insert your unique problem here. Um, so forgive me, I'm gonna just um, take your card and I would love to follow up later. I need to continue and, uh, and try to find this person. Actually, can you introduce me to anyone you've met so far? So it's a really great way to get out of a conversation you don't wanna be stuck in. Um, but it's also a great way to get something out of the event. And that's all about preparation. So. Another mistake you can make is to show up and promote yourself um, instead of uh, being more interested in, in the people that are there. So when I first started promoting the networking group, I would go to ACRP events. They had social mixers and I brought an iPad and I was like, oh, I have a mailing list and I want to get names so that I can stay in touch with you after this event. Write your, write your name on the iPad and then I'll email you. And people were a little bit confused <laughs> because I was shoving an iPad in their face. Um, I wanted the email address so badly, I forgot to uh, pay attention to the people. So it's been a lot more natural for me now. When I go to an event, I don't bring the iPad. It seemed like such a great idea, um, but it was just a little overwhelming. So I just say, oh yeah, I run this networking group. Is that something you want to hear more about? And usually they'll say, yeah, let me give you my card. And then I go home and I put them in the database later and they can find out about it on their own time. Um, but when I first started, I was absolutely self-promoting in the not so nice way um, because I wasn't paying attention to the people I was talking to. I'm like, you know, do you need my service? Can I give it to you? Yes or no, move on to the next one. So I had done some networking fails a couple of years ago, but I'd like to think I'm a little bit better now at networking and I'm a lot better listener. Um, not today, cause I'm talking the whole time, but if anybody has anything to say, <laughs> you can put up your flag and I'd be happy to listen and uh, share that. 
Um, so especially if you're in business development, if you're so focused on getting business that you're not trying to build relationships, um, then you won't be successful because when people want to buy from you, um, they're going to want you to give to them first. So it's give, give, get. So how can I create value for you? Who can I introduce you to? Have you read this article? What do you think of the weather? Um, you want to get to know them over time and that just builds trust and authority and then people are gonna convert. So even in your own job at work, when you have an idea that you're pitching within your study team, you don't just show up at the meeting and say, I have an idea. Uh, there's a lot of water cooler talk that's happening. You're going by the medical monitor's office and you're going by the program manager's office and you're saying, I have some ideas about you know, an improvement we can make on the study or a new vendor that we could use or you know, what we could do about this problem project manager. You wanna pitch those ideas um, over time and build that relationship and trust um, rather than just promoting your idea um, flat out in front of someone. So I think the machine gun approach is probably a little bit um, self-explanatory, but you know, within an event, just kind of scanning the room and seeing like, who can I attack? Um, but more importantly, only going to events, you know, I, I'm just gonna go on like a frenzy and I'm gonna go to 10 events and I'm gonna have all these business cards and I'll put them in a pile under my bed and do nothing with them. Um, so I, I wouldn't take a machine gun approach. I would go to an event when you know that you can put in the time to plan for the success of the event. You know, you can show up to the event and be ready to network. And when you can actually do the follow-up because not following up um, is falling down. And you're gonna see these people at another event later and it's gonna be embarrassing because they'll say, oh, I gave you my card and I never heard from you. Um, it's about consistency. Just don't do a whole bunch of one-off tactics. Um, like don't go on social network and just blast everybody and then vanish and not respond. Um, it's a strategy. You just consistently chisel away at networking over time. And I actually have software that helps me stay organized so that I can remember who to follow up with when, and I set timeframes. And I have a spreadsheet that I shared with the networking group. If anybody wants a copy of that spreadsheet, just email me to Nadia at conopstoolkit.com. And I'll send you um, what's called a customer relationship management spreadsheet. But you basically just list all your contacts, you know, down the first column. And then across the top, you just write the frequency of how often. And you can just do like conditional formatting based on the date. When was the last contact? Am I out of touch? Red, yellow, green, like a stoplight. And then, you know, every week, just try to find three or four people to, you know, stay in touch with. So you could also have a formal networking plan. So in this group, I also created... Um, and shared a template of how to figure out who you want to improve your relationships with and actually write it down. You know, what would it take to move this relationship forward and keep things warm and have them remember me and have them uh, be a resource for me. So those are some of the mistakes that I've made <laughs> in networking. Um, some of the mistakes that hopefully you can avoid uh, having heard a little bit of my story. Um, I never did eat that like clam juice and then talk to anyone. That's actually not cool. I didn't do that. But um, I'm curious if anybody else has made mistakes <laughs> that they regret in their networking. Um, just raise your flag, talk in the chat if you wanna add um, any funny personal stories about how you might've failed at networking. All right, well, great. You guys are all such good networkers. I don't even know why you dialed into the call, but thanks for coming. All right, let's go on to the next slide. Um, so taking a more positive spin on it, how can we make sure that we are model networkers to everyone? This is my friend, Christina Cletus, and she is a model networker. She's awesome. I met her in San Francisco just a couple of years ago, and I asked her to come in and be our community ambassador because every time I see her at an event, whether it's Conops Toolkit or one of the other Bay Area events, she's hosting people. And she's not the host. <laughs> she's just going around and grabbing people that look like they're not included. I'm like, hey, how are you? And I just love Christina. She's so giving. And I couldn't think of a better face for the networking group that we have. So I did, um, I did ask Christina, you know, can you do this for us? Can you come to Toolkit and be our ambassador? And she's been great. I think she's been to like three or four of our events in the last year. And she's assembling her own team now. So if anyone is in the Bay Area and you want to get involved in our events team, Christina is pretty much the face of the Toolkit at this point for our volunteer ambassadors. Um, but I, I definitely, what I've learned from her and I've seen her do so masterfully is even if you're not hosting the event, you can be an ambassador at the event. You can go up and help others. You can be inclusive. There's no reason to linger with your friends and associates. I know it feels comfortable, but you came with them. Go meet someone new, practice your pitch, go get noticed, put your creative energy into promoting others. 
assisting others and helping others. And this is what Christina does. She'll be talking to someone and she'll say, hey, did you say that you have expertise in this? I just met this guy on the other side of the room who totally is looking for somebody. And she'll literally drag them across the room by the arm and like introduce them to each other. Um, she's a super connector, just like me. And you don't have to do that, but I think it gets her noticed. And I think, um, I think it's important to get noticed because why would you go to the event and not, you know, not want to take away something meaningful? So we have about 10 minutes left and I want to give us five minutes to chat. So in conclusion, does anyone have anything else to add for how you can be a superstar networker? Um, because I kind of want to drive home why this topic is so near and dear to me and why I care so deeply about connecting others. Raise your flag, put something in the chat, join in. It's a small world. All right, I went to Tokyo and I took a picture of uh, Disney Tokyo Small World. It looks the same, by the way, as all the other small worlds at all the other Disneys. Um, but it, the people were super polite. That was kind of cool. All right, we don't collect people, right? You don't go to a networking event and say, oh, I got 100 cards. You're collecting bonds. You're creating bonds. You're building networks. And all of it is supposed to be based on the idea of you're simply giving freely of your time and talents. This is why I volunteer. This is why I have the toolkit because I want to be able to give to others. It just feels good to be able to share and exchange what I've discovered to help me be effective. In this program, I said to the, to the Elevate group, all of us know this much, or we know everything, right? About one little tiny inch. So imagine, you know, I'm holding up a, a ruler because my camera stopped working for some reason. Um, you know everything about one inch. So if you add your one inch to everyone else's one inch, you end up with a yardstick, right? Like you improve your knowledge by exchanging with other people. And when I say it's a small world, I'm talking about our industry. Everybody knows everyone on this phone. Um, I'm so connected to so many of you in so many different ways. And if you went and said, do you know Nadia? There's probably people in your network who know me. So this industry is small. And you know the way that you act and the way that you connect to others, um, it precedes you. Your reputation precedes you. Um, so own your own brand. Be confident about who you are. But also be hopeful. Be relaxed. It's a small industry. Get out there and meet people. And when you start applying yourself to helping others, um, you, you become more known in this industry because we need to help each other in order to better serve our patients. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today and just give you some down and dirty networking tips, things that you can think about to go into your next event and be successful, but also within your internal working groups. How can you network and be more trusted and have more authority at work? And I think it all starts with understanding what your brand is and how that's differentiating. What are you bringing to the table? Thank you for being a part of this program. Thank you for joining this call. You are responsible for elevating your clinical operations career. And the best way to elevate your career is by holding your hand out and helping others along the way. People aren't gonna remember what you say, they're gonna remember how you make them feel. So the way that you're speaking, your attitude, your tone, it reflects who you are, it impacts everything around you, and it's just gonna to contribute to your success or non-success. Uh, both in business and your personal life. So think before you speak, get out there and speak and, and speak in a way that's self-promotion in, in a positive way. So thank you for joining. We have about 10 minutes left. I'm happy to stay on the phone and answer any questions. Start typing them in the comments, guys, or start raising your flag and I'll one-on-one -on -one, you know, answer any questions or we can have other people chime in on their perspective. For the next steps, please, please, ask for feedback from your network and get to know yourself better. It's service to yourself and others for you to know who you are and the unique and wonderful value that you bring. Um, find out what that is, go put it on your LinkedIn, get it cleaned up and brand yourself. I'll send you an article as a follow up to this on the benefits of personal branding. Um, but ask your network, get that feedback and put your hands out wide and stand up and stand out. And then the last point is, send the elevator back down, right? So when you're rising up in your career and you're getting to the next level, don't forget um, the challenges that you went through and hold your hand behind you and help others 
get to the same level as you because it's not a zero sum game. There's no reason to be competitive at work. We can all succeed together. There's enough of a need for patients to get life-saving medications and for clinical trials to be more efficient. We can help one another and you can send the elevator right back. You can lift others up and still be successful. So thank you for being a part of the Elevate program. Um, for those of you that are formally in the program, I invite you to our retrospective next Sunday. Let's fix this so that next time we run the program, it's better for the people that came after you because that's what Elevate is all about. So I really appreciate your time. I don't have any more slides. Um, I would love to hear from people uh, what your feedback is and what are your next steps and do you feel more equipped for networking? So. Any comments, any questions? All right, we're gonna get this um, recorded and we'll put it out on the internet. I hope that there was something helpful. I hope this was a good use of your time. Um, weekends are sacred and I want everybody to have a really successful week. So thank you for taking some of your personal time to come in. Um, there's a couple comments here coming in. <laughs> I like this. Okay, Shay is having fun. Uh, Shay says, you nailed it. One, know yourself. Two, share it with others. Ah, oh, thank you, Shay. This is such a compliment for me. And I really appreciate that you believed in this group and came out and you said, great use of my time this afternoon. Um, thank you. Um, I, feel like, I feel like really touched that I was able to meet you in this group. And then we have another one here from Natasha. Um, how can we get on the wait list for the next group? Awesome, Natasha, I'm glad you asked. So I'll send out a link um, so that everyone can get in the wait list and we'll give you that opportunity to have the same exchange that we've had and go through this program at your own pace. Um, so I don't have the link active right now, but it's a Google spreadsheet. So we'll just get you in the list and um, I will definitely send that as a follow-up. So everyone who registered for the webinar, I got your email address specifically so I could send you the link for learning about your personal brand. Um, and then we can send you kind of the overview of the program and the the place to apply. So uh, we've got one more here from Gina. Gina is saying, I love the focus on elevating yourself, but helping others along the way. Um, Gina, I did not believe that I deserved to ask for help. I was like, oh, I, you know, I'm so entitled and, you know, I have such privilege. Like, how do I get to ask others? Um, but then I realized that that's, that is leadership, right? It's saying like, I make mistakes and I'm vulnerable and I need others. Um, so I do focus on elevating myself. Um, but my way of giving back is exactly that. It's to try to find others who, who want to do the same. And I think peer mentoring is, is huge. And I'm so glad that I found people that feel the same way. And uh, this is like my mastermind group. It's like a sandbox. And it's like Jennifer said, I get to do things and elevate that I might not necessarily have been presented with at work. Nobody's you know, put me in a management position. And yet I feel like I impact the career of others and others' professional development on, on a weekly basis. And um, you don't have to wait for somebody to give you authority. You can assign it to yourself. And in this group, if you're ready to elevate yourself and others, then get in line because we're taking applications and we'd love to help you elevate your career. So, all right, this has been a fun Sunday. Thanks everyone for dialing in. I'm sorry that, um, I don't know if there's any other people waiting. If there's anyone on the phone, just um, maybe I'll just unmute everybody really quickly. and <laughs> I'll just start talking. Um, but otherwise, I think we're going to wrap it up here. And thanks everyone for your interest in the program um, and believing in it and supporting it. And go secure some Ebola this week. Do something big. <laughs> all right, you're all off mute. So if anybody has any parting thoughts, um, your moment is now. We just got one from Asia. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks, guys, and have a fantastic weekend and uh, have a really successful week. Thanks, Alia. Thank hey. you. Thanks.